Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. And thanks for your support. During World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union fought together as allies against the Axis powers. However, the relationship between the two nations was a tense one. Americans had long been wary of Soviet communism and concerned about Russian leader Joseph Stalin's tyrannical rule of his own country. For their part, the Soviets resented the Americans' decades-long refusal to treat the USSR as a legitimate part of the international community, as well as their delayed entry into World War II, which resulted in the deaths of tens of millions of Russians. After the war ended, these grievances ripened into an overwhelming sense of mutual distrust and enmity. Post-war Soviet expansionism in Eastern Europe fueled many Americans' fears of a Russian plan to control the world. Meanwhile, the USSR came to resent what they per perceived as American officials' bellicose rhetoric, arms buildup and interventionist approach to international relations. In such a hostile atmosphere, no single party was entirely to blame for the Cold War, in fact, some historians believe it was inevitable. Cold War, the open yet restricted rivalry that developed after World War II between the United States and the Soviet Union and their respective allies. The Cold War was waged on political, economic, and propaganda fronts and had only limited recourse to weapons. The term was first used by the English writer George Orwell in an article published in 1945 to refer to what he predicted would be a nuclear stalemate between two or three monstrous superstates, each possessed of a weapon by which millions of people can be wiped out in a few seconds. It was first used in the United States by the American financier and presidential advisor Bernard Baruch in a speech at the State House in Columbia, South Carolina, in 1947. The Cold War, Containment by the time World War II ended, most American officials agreed that the best defense against the Soviet threat was a strategy called containment. In his famous long telegram, the diplomat George Kennan, 1904-2005, explained the policy. The Soviet Union, he wrote, was a political force committed fanatically to the belief that with the U.S. there can be no permanent modus vivendi, agreement between parties that disagree. Dot. As a result, America's only choice was the long-term, patient but firm and vigilant containment of Russian expansive tendencies. It must be the policy of, of the United States, he declared before Congress in 1947, to support free peoples who are resisting attempted subjugation by outside pressures. This way of thinking would shape American foreign policy for the next four decades. Origins of the Cold War Following the surrender of Nazi Germany in May 1945 near the close of World War II, the uneasy wartime alliance between the United States and Great Britain on the one hand and the Soviet Union on the other began to unravel. By 1948 the Soviets had installed left-wing governments in the countries of Eastern Europe that had been liberated by the Red Army. The Americans and the British feared the permanent Soviet domination of Eastern Europe and the threat of Soviet-influenced communist parties coming to power in the democracies of Western Europe. The Soviets, on the other hand, were determined to maintain control of Eastern Europe in order to safeguard against any possible renewed threat from Germany, and they were intent on spreading communism worldwide, largely for ideological reasons. The Cold War had solidified by 1947 to 48, when U.S. aid provided under the Marshall Plan to Western Europe had brought those countries under American influence and the Soviets had installed openly communist regimes in Eastern Europe. Did you know? The term Cold War first appeared in a 1945 essay by the English writer George Orwell called You and the Atomic Bomb. The Cold War, the Atomic Age. The containment strategy also provided the rationale for an unprecedented arms buildup in the United States. In 1950, a National Security Council report known as NSC-68 had echoed Truman's recommendation that the country use military force to contain communist expansionism anywhere it seemed to be occurring. To that end, the report called for a fourfold increase in defense spending. In particular, American officials encouraged the development of atomic weapons like the ones that had ended World War II. Thus began a deadly arms race. In 1949, the Soviets tested an atom bomb of their own. In response, President Truman announced that the United States would build an even more destructive atomic weapon, the hydrogen bomb, or super bomb. 
Stalin followed suit. As a result, the stakes of the Cold War were perilously high. The first H-bomb test, in the Inuitak Atoll in the Marshall Islands, showed just how fearsome the nuclear age could be. It created a 25-square-mile fireball that vaporized an island, blew a huge hole in the ocean floor, and had the power to destroy half of Manhattan. Subsequent American and Soviet tests spewed radioactive waste into the atmosphere. The ever-present threat of nuclear annihilation had a great impact on American domestic life as well. People built bomb shelters in their backyards. They practiced attack drills in schools and other public places. The 1950s and 1960s saw an epidemic of popular films that horrified moviegoers with depictions of nuclear devastation and mutant creatures. In these and other ways, the Cold War was a constant presence in Americans' everyday lives. The Cold War extends to space. Space exploration served as another dramatic arena for Cold War competition. On October 4, 1957, a Soviet R-7 intercontinental ballistic missile launched Sputnik, Russian 4 traveling companion, the world's first artificial satellite and the first man-made object to be placed into the Earth's orbit. Sputnik's launch came as a surprise, and not a pleasant one, to most Americans. In the United States, space was seen as the next frontier, a logical extension of the grand American tradition of exploration, and it was crucial not to lose too much ground to the Soviets. In addition, this demonstration of the overwhelming power of the R-7 missile, seemingly capable of delivering a nuclear warhead into U.S. airspace, made gathering intelligence about Soviet military activities particularly urgent. In 1958, the U.S. launched its own satellite, Explorer I, designed by the U.S. Army under the direction of rocket scientist Wernher von Braun, and what came to be known as the space race was underway. That same year, President Dwight Eisenhower signed a public order creating the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, a federal agency dedicated to space exploration, as well as several programs seeking to exploit the military potential of space. Still, the Soviets were one step ahead, launching the first man into space in April 1961. The Struggle Between Superpowers The Cold War reached its peak in 1948-53. In this period the Soviets unsuccessfully blockaded the western-held sectors of West Berlin, 1948-49, the United States and its European allies formed the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, a unified military command to resist the Soviet presence in Europe, 1949, the Soviets exploded their first atomic warhead, 1949, thus ending the American monopoly on the atomic bomb, the Chinese communists came to power in mainland China, 1949, and the Soviet-supported communist government of North Korea invaded US-supported US South Korea in 1950, setting off an indecisive Korean War that lasted until 1953. From 1953 to 1957 Cold War tensions relaxed somewhat, largely owing to the death of the longtime Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin in 1953, nevertheless, the standoff remained. A unified military organization among the Soviet bloc countries, the Warsaw Pact, was formed in 1955, and West Germany was admitted into NATO that same year. Another intense stage of the Cold War was in 1958-62. The United States and the Soviet Union began developing intercontinental ballistic missiles, and in 1962 the Soviets began secretly installing missiles in Cuba that could be used to launch nuclear attacks on U.S. cities. This sparked the Cuban Missile Crisis, 1962, a confrontation that brought the two superpowers to the brink of war before an agreement was reached to withdraw the missiles. From 1953 to 1957 Cold War tensions relaxed somewhat, largely owing to the death of the longtime Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin in 1953, nevertheless, the standoff remained. A unified military organization among the Soviet bloc countries, the Warsaw Pact, was formed in 1955, and West Germany was admitted into NATO that same year. Another intense stage of the Cold War was in 1958-62. The United States and the Soviet Union began developing intercontinental ballistic missiles, and in 1962 the Soviets began secretly install installing missiles in Cuba that could be used to launch nuclear attacks on U.S. cities. This sparked the Cuban Missile Crisis, 
1962, a confrontation that brought the two superpowers to the brink of war before an agreement was reached to withdraw the missiles. Throughout the Cold War the United States and the Soviet Union avoided direct military confrontation in Europe and engaged in actual combat operations only to keep allies from defecting to the other side or to overthrow them after they had done so. Thus, the Soviet Union sent troops to preserve communist rule in East Germany, 1953, Hungary, 1956, Czechoslovakia, 1968, and Afghanistan, 1979. For its part, the United States helped overthrow a left-wing government in Guatemala, 1954, supported an unsuccessful invasion of Cuba, 1961, invaded the Dominican Republic, 1965, and Grenada, 1983, and undertook a long, 1964-75, an unsuccessful effort to prevent communist North Vietnam from bringing South Vietnam under its rule. In the course of the 1960s and 70s however, the bipolar struggle between the Soviet and American blocs gave way to a more complicated pattern of international relationships in which the world was no longer split into two clearly opposed blocs. A major split had occurred between the Soviet Union and China in 1960 and widened over the years, shattering the unity of the communist bloc. In the meantime, Western Europe and Japan achieved dynamic economic growth in the 1950s and 60s, reducing their relative inferior inferiority to the United States. Less powerful countries had more room to assert their independence and often showed themselves resistant to superpower coercion. The 1970s saw an easing of Cold War tensions as evinced in the Strategic Arms Limitation Talks SALT, that led to the SALT I and II agreements of 1972 and 1979, respectively, in which the two superpowers set limits on their anti-ballistic missiles and on their strategic missiles capable of carrying nuclear weapons. That was followed by a period of renewed Cold War tensions in the early 1980s as the two superpowers continued their massive arms buildup and competed for influence in the Third World. But the Cold War began to break down in the late 1980s during the administration of Soviet leader Mikhail S. Gorbachev. He dismantled the totalitarian aspects of the Soviet system and began efforts to democratize the Soviet political system. When communist regimes in the Soviet bloc countries of Eastern Europe collapsed in 1989-90, Gorbachev acquiesced in their fall. The rise to power of democratic governments in East Germany, Poland, Hungary, and Czechoslovakia was quickly followed by the unification of West and East Germany under NATO auspices, again with Soviet approval. Gorbachev's internal reforms had meanwhile weakened his own communist party and allowed power to shift to Russia and the other constituent republics of the Soviet Union. In late 19 1991 the Soviet Union collapsed and 15 newly independent nations were born from its corpse, including a Russia with a democratically elected, anti-communist leader. The Cold War had come to an end. The Close of the Cold War Almost as soon as he took office, President Richard Nixon, 1913-1994, began to implement a new approach to international relations. Instead of viewing the world as a hostile, bipolar place, he suggested, why not use diplomacy instead of military action to create more poles? To that end, he encouraged the United Nations to recognize the communist Chinese government and, after a trip there in 1972, began to establish diplomatic relations with Beijing. At the same time, he adopted a policy of détente, relaxation, toward the Soviet Union. In 1972, he and Soviet Premier Leonid Brezhnev, 1906-1982, signed the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, SALT I, which prohibited the manufacture of nuclear missiles by both sides and took a step toward reducing the decades-old threat of nuclear war. Despite Nixon's efforts, the Cold War heated up again under President Ronald Reagan, 1911 to 2004. Like many leaders of his generation, Reagan believed that the spread of communism anywhere threatened freedom everywhere. As a result, he worked to provide financial and military aid to anti-communist governments and insurgencies around the world. This policy, particularly as it was applied in the developing world in places like Granada and El Salvador, was known as the Reagan Doctrine. Even as Reagan fought communism in Central America however, the Soviet Union was disintegrating. In response to severe economic problems and growing political ferment in the USSR, Premier Mikhail Gorbachev, 
1931, took office in 1985 and introduced two policies that redefined Russia's relationship to the rest of the world, glasnost, or political openness, and perestroika, or economic reform. Soviet influence in Eastern Europe waned. In 1989, every other communist state in the region replaced its government with a non-communist one. In November of that year, the Berlin Wall, the most visible symbol of the decades-long Cold War, was finally destroyed, just over two years after Reagan had challenged the Soviet premier in a speech at Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. By 1991, the Soviet Union itself had fallen apart. The Cold War was over. Thank you for watching see you again for another interesting facts and amazing stories and also please like and subscribe.